So we come to maybe one of the most important climaxes of the book of Revelation. Think back, chapter 5, we saw the scroll that needed to be opened. And now we see the open scroll being given to John as he's uh, in his vision. So let's dig into what does this mean that the scroll is here? Who is this figure that's giving John the scroll? And what does that mean uh, for us today? Revelation 10, 1 through 11. Then I saw another powerful angel coming down from heaven. He was robed with a cloud with a rainbow over his head. His face was like the sun and his feet were like fiery pillars. He held an open scroll in his hand. He put his right foot on the sea and his left foot on the land. He called out with a loud voice like a lion roaring. And when he called out, the seven thunders raised their voices. When the seven thunders spoke, I was about to write, but I heard a voice from heaven say, seal up what the seven thunders have said. Don't write it down. Then the angel I saw standing on the sea and on the land raised his right hand to heaven. He swore by the one who lives forever and always, who created heaven and what is in it, and the earth and what is in it, and the sea and what is in it, and said, The time is up. In the days when the seventh angel blows his trumpet, God's mysterious purpose will be accomplished, fulfilling the good news he gave to his servant, the prophets. Then the voice I heard from heaven spoke to me again and said, Go, take the open scroll from the hand of the angel who stands on the sea and on the land. So I went to the angel and told him to give me the scroll. He said to me, Take it and eat it. It will make you sick to your stomach, but sweet as honey in your mouth. So I took a scroll from the angel's hand and ate it. And it was sweet as honey in my mouth, but when I swallowed it, it made my stomach churn. I was told, You must prophesy again about many peoples, nations, languages, and kings. Okay, so right off the bat, I think a big question is going to be, Who is this angel exactly? And then trying to unpack this scroll that shows up all throughout the story. So there's a lot of debate about this, but this angel feels different. We've seen a lot of powerful angels coming with different messages. This one stands out. Uh, The way that he is described, clothed with the cloud and the rainbow and the fiery pillars and his face like the sun and his voice like a lion, I am more and more convinced that we're supposed to be seeing Jesus here. This angel is described using some of the same characteristics that God and Christ are described, especially if you go back and read through Revelations 1 through 5. Not to mention the fact that in Revelation 5, we saw, we saw a scroll that was sealed, that nobody, nobody was worthy to open the scroll and look inside. But here, now, after the, se- the seven seals have been broken, we see an open scroll in the hand of this figure here. It's a little odd that he's called an angel. This would be the only time John would be using that designation for Jesus, but I think there's a reason why uh, if we look at some of the Old Testament verses in the background here. That one, that gets us to specifically unpacking what this scroll might be about. Uh, So, I think, uh, and a lot of other scholars would argue, that this is the same scroll that we saw in Revelation 5. Uh, It could be at least a part of that scroll. Maybe there's still more to unveil. Maybe the scroll contain more information than what is given to John here. Uh, But either way, it seems to be either in, in whole or in part the same scroll that we saw back in Revelation 5. So two very clear Old Testament references that John is using in the background here. There's going to be Daniel chapter 12 and then Ezekiel chapters 2 and 3. So let's look at that for a little bit here. I have Daniel 12 right here. And this is, this is the main one that I think is why, if, if John is talking about Jesus, why he would call him an angel is because he's also recalling this chapter here where Daniel gets a vision of another scroll. Same, same word here, but a scroll or a book. And in this case, the scroll is the scroll of the names of all those who are found written in the book of life. So those that are redeemed and and saved by God. Uh, This is a scroll talking about the end of days when all will rise from the earth. Some will rise to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. And the figure here does the same sort of actions that the figure in Revelation 10. And so one, Daniel is called to, told to shut up part of the words of the book until the time of the end. Uh, same thing as the scroll given to John. And then here we see figures standing on the bank of the stream and a man clothed in li- linen 
who raises his right hand and his left toward heaven and swears by him who lives forevermore. And we have all of these things kind of pointing forward to before the end, before the thing, all of these things are finished. Uh, the, the wicked are going to act wickedly. The power of the holy people are going to be shattered. We're going to see that play out in the next couple chapters in Revelation. But Daniel, shut up the words and seal them until the end. And so we're, we're seeing a lot of the same imagery. Essentially, Daniel, even beforehand, is given a vision of a scroll that needs to be sealed until the end. And it seems like the same figure is there. Uh, so hold on to that for a little bit. The other one would be Ezekiel. End of Ezekiel 2 and into chapter 3. Ezekiel is being talked to the Son of Man. Uh, this is Ezekiel now in this passage, but there's a scroll that is given to Ezekiel, and he is told to eat the scroll and go and speak to the house of Israel. The scroll written on this scroll are words of lamentation, mourning, and woe. And he eats it, and in his mouth it's sweet as honey, uh, and then but he has a very bitter word to declare. And so both of these are kind of commissioning these prophetic voices to go and proclaim part of the word of God. And the word of God initially sound, is sweet in your mouth, which is another way that the word of God is described throughout scripture. But it makes your stomach churn in the sense that when, it, when it's a prophecy about judgment and destruction, Ezekiel and Daniel, now John, they are obligated to to proclaim this prophecy but it's also gonna it's gonna be a bitter proclamation uh, you must still prophesy where anytime you have to prophesy words of lamentation woe and mourning it's going to to leave a bitter taste in your stomach and so there's this there's a lot of different images converging here uh, and really this this chapter has caused me to rethink even how I described the scroll the first time. So in chapter 5, if you go back and watch that video, I described the scroll as God's last will and testament or, or a trust, uh, the, the title deed for the earth, something, something along those lines that had to do with his, his power, his authority, his unveiling of all of his plan, which I think is still there. Uh, but here, we see the scroll is opened, and at least part of the purpose is to, if we're taking from Daniel 12, is to designate the people of God. So this prophecy is going to seal the people of God and designate who are the, the rebellious. It's, it's by proclaiming the gospel, some people believe and turn to, turn to the Lord, and some people are turned off even further. It's also a, a declaration. It's a prophecy against peoples, nations, languages, and kings. It has a lot of lamentation and woe. And so the different descriptions of the scrolls in Daniel 12 and Ezekiel 2 may be coming up here. And I find it really fascinating that, again, if this is Jesus, part of his purpose is to actually give this word to his servants, to his prophets. Uh, and so here, John in particular is being commissioned. He's given the scroll just like Ezekiel. Uh, I think you could probably also take that further and say we too essentially could see ourselves in this role. The, the angel who is here, Jesus, had the authority to open the scroll. The seals have been broken and now the purposes of God can go forth and it's people, it's us. We are given the mandate to actually go and prophesy. We're not just passive observers in this story, but we are now taking an active role in proclaiming the word of God. It's sweet to our mouth, but bitter to our stomach, because we have to proclaim the entire word of God, the judgment, the justice, the grace, the mercy, all of it. I'll end with this. Uh, verse 7, I think, is a great summary. If we wanted to, just from the text itself, to describe what was the content of that scroll that we saw in chapter 5, and we're seeing, I think, unfurled here in chapter 10, it's right here. In the culmination, in the days of the seventh trumpet, God's mysterious purposes will be accomplished, fulfilling the good news that he gave his servants, the prophets. This is the word gospel. It's one of the few times it shows up in the book of Revelation. But this is a great summary. What is, this, what is the word of God being proclaimed throughout the entire book of Revelation as this scroll is read aloud? It's the mysterious purposes of God being accomplished. It's the good news being fulfilled. 
and it's being transmitted through us, his servants and the prophets. <laughs>